Welcome back to AMC Jedi Council. I am Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, and this is the show where we hit everything in the world of Star Wars. And this could be the canon that links from the comics to the video games back into the movies. And I'd like to first address everybody on the council today. You know him. He is Mark 2 D2 himself, Mark Ellis. What's up, Mark? Guys, they're making new Star Wars movies. I don't know if you guys heard. Hopefully we talk about it today. <laughs> yeah. And joining us from Slash Film, we know this guy is a big Star Wars fan, wanted him on for a while. It's Jermaine, Lucia Jermaine. What's up, man? Uh, not much. Very happy to be here. And uh, I don't know if I can talk about Star Wars for this long. It's going to be tough. But <laughs> yeah. let's really try. Yeah, we, I think we did that within a second from seeing each other over the weekend. And Mark, I know you might be jealous here. How was your guys' weekend? What it are was, you guys doing? It Anything was fun? great. I love Jermaine's shirt because. I picked up at the Star Wars store inside ILM and Lucasfilm in uh, San Francisco. Like, yes. That's bragging. Oh, that's bragging right God. there. Uh, we were was... not there for Star Wars, unfortunately. No. no. We were there for something else that we'll find out later next week. But. That was like a dream come true. I honestly didn't even know that ILM was in the same building as Lucasfilm. I thought we were going to ILM, yeah. which is cool enough. And then you walk in and there's the Lucasfilm logo, and I'm like, oh, "This, I, uh, I don't, I, I just lost we, it." All of us. It was like uh, you, I felt again like I was eight years old in Toys R Us. Like you got when we got like the, Yoda greets you. There's a statue a of Yoda, right? And Yoda, the, yep. And the group that we were with. All professionals, but not for that moment. Like yeah. everybody was taking pictures in front of Boba Fett, and and it's just like you just saw everybody turn into children. Again. Yeah, it's like a huge toy store. Like they really do have every like hallway that you can are allowed to walk in is yeah. just lined with props from Star Wars. Yes, but also all the other movies that ILM and Lucasfilm has done, and you're just like stunned. It's, it's, like, a, it's amazing. I took a whole bunch of pictures, actually. I put them on my, my Instagram, so if you want to go there, just check out my Instagram and you can see a bunch of pictures that we saw at ILM. Um, that being said, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. If you're brand new to the show, the first segment that we do on this show, it's pretty simple. It's just Star Wars movie news. Everything happening in the world of the movies in Star Wars. That could be episode 7, 8, or 9. It could be the anthology films. We're going to talk about them. Mark, what's the first story up today? Still trying to recover from the fact that I didn't have as good of a weekend <laughs> as you boys. Uh, well, we got an Oscar winner joining the cast of Rogue One already. We got Felicity Jones, Riz Ahmed, Diego Luna, and Ben Mendelsohn in the first anthology film set for release in December 2016. And now Forrest Whitaker has been added to the cast. Christian, you got to be excited about this. I am excited about the possibility because the thing is, what you also have to realize, to, even though everyone's saying that Ben Mendelsohn and all these and Diego Luna, they're all confirmed. The only one really confirmed at the moment is Felicity Jones. And I think that's also because Jermaine and I were talking about it right before we went on air is that I think that it has to do a, a lot with the fact that Rogue One can't promote much until Mission Impossible Rogue Nation comes out. Right, right. Now, in order to, th that's why I think you're getting these leaks and story, like, like Variety and how the reporter are reporting on it because. I think you can pretty much take it to the bank that this is happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, definitely. I mean, I, I think that nobody, I forget who exactly who broke this, might have been Variety, but they, they wouldn't have reported on it unless it was as close as possible. And when it came to the, you know, episode seven, we didn't know anybody. We sort of knew, sort of knew, you know, right. Adam Driver, et cetera. And then we get the one big news release with everybody. And I'm sure that'll happen with the Rogue One. But they, they don't want to, you know, put the, uh, the thoughts away from Force Awakens right now. Right. But Forrest Whitaker, A, well, A, first of all, as great as Forrest Whitaker is, we don't know if he's actually playing himself. With, with any of these people, you, they could always be <laughs> yeah. performance capture or something. But he's one of those great actors that, despite winning an Oscar, you almost never think of him. I don't know why. Like, he's always just blends into his characters. Yeah. And so when you're like, oh, my God, Forrest Whitaker's in this movie. That's so awesome. And then you're like, what else has he been in? And you're like, oh, he was the last King of Scotland and Ghost Dog. And, and, and he's got a million other movies that you right. always forget about. Right. He's just because he's just so great. But he never pops up. I think that's what's great about Gareth Edwards casting this movie is every movie person he's brought in is like, is a great not that guy, but like a little above a right. great that guy. You yeah, know? they're all yeah, they're all phenomenal actors that have been rumored to be in this. And you're right, it was Variety that first reported this. And Forrest Whitaker is such a versatile actor; he can actually do action. He's done some action films. He's done some dramatic films, obviously. And so when you put him in there, he's a great actor. But he's not like a Will Smith or a Brad Pitt, where their name in there might overtake the actual movie. All these characters that are all these actors that we're looking at that are already cast in this movie. It looks like they're all gonna. It's gonna be a nice ensemble cast and it's not going to overtake the fact that this is Star Wars. Yeah, I love the fact that Forrest Whitaker is being rumored or, or is going to be in this movie because you can picture him. For me, I picture him right around that table giving the orders to the Rebels. Uh, absolutely. Going in and saying, okay, this is what we have to do. Make sure you're going in. He's given the orders. He's the seasoned vet. I see him fighting for the Rebellion. Now, maybe they do a spin and, and like you said, Jimmy, maybe he's in uh, performance capture. Maybe he's working for the Empire. But I would say a, a bet, I would say you place your money on That's the That's what I was going to say too. Yeah, he's definitely like a Rebel leader, right? Yeah. He's got the gravitas. Yep. You know, you, you, you want to follow what he says. 
But I'm thinking, but at this point, we don't know who are the leaders of the rebellion because you know, is it Akbar and Mon Mothma, or you know, is it Princess Leia yet? Probably not. We well, don't what know. we've learned from Rebels is that there's a bunch of different cells. That's true. That's true. So if you have, I think Mon Mothma and um, Bell Organa are still running the ship. They're they're the ones making all the moves. But we're going to see these different cells. That's why I'm still adamant that one way or another, there's going to be some kind of tie-in to Rebels, just because of what Kiri Hart said at Star Wars Celebration, um, that they're very aware that it. Takes takes place. Oh yeah. But we don't know how much it's going to take place and exactly like you're saying like what faction are these rebels? How high like is it just a certain cell that maybe one certain platoon that happens to do something special? We don't know. Yeah, I interviewed Dave Filoni at Celebration. I asked him. I said, "Will there be like could could there be crossover?" And he was very like that would be awesome. Yeah, he's you know? that, so that he, dude is gonna, a Sith Lord when it yeah, comes to Yeah, of course, to, yeah. totally. But I I mean, I think it's very possible. Speaking of Sith Lords, let's not forget Forrest Whitaker can also play a bad I mean, he he won an Oscar for playing Edie Amin and That's he right. also was uh in Battlefield Earth, which I probably shouldn't have brought up. No, but I mean, he's a bad so guy in that too, that so We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, the Hashtag Show has posted an image that appears to be one Carrie Fisher wearing a gray jumpsuit and a black vest. Could this be the costume that she's wearing when it might be her hand that's receiving the lightsaber in the second Force Awakens teaser? What's interesting about this costume is that it looks a lot like what the Rebels initially wore in the first Star Wars film when Darth Vader takes over that Carillion yeah. Corvette and he walks in and the Stormtroopers wipe everybody out. It looks very similar. Now, is that not enough of a regal dress to make us think it's going to be Queen Leia? Is that just her dressing down for action on a Saturday night? Christian, what's your take? Um, I like it. It's, it's got to actually, funny enough, it reminded me of Star Trek when I saw it. Um, but but I actually think it works for her if this is indeed the, the outfit because of what Leia has always been as a character. And like you're saying, she's not going to... Oh, that's not to say she won't be wearing the regal outfits, but the most time you're going to see her and she's ready for battle. She's ready to call and make the big decisions. And that looks like a big decision kind of got my hands dirty outfit. But Jermaine, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's got to be it. I mean, it looks like, like you said, the, the arm we saw in the second teaser, A. B, I mean, if that is a Photoshop, that's a great Photoshop. I mean, obviously it's blurry. And C, when I went to look for the actual source video, I think the hashtag show had to actually take it down. So this mm. is like a JPEG mm. cap of it, and which is both could say, you know, oh my God, Lucasfilm made him take it down because it's real. Right. But at the same time, Lucasfilm hasn't done that for anything. You know, there's been all this leaked concept right. art, all these spoilers, all these rumors, all these fake rumors, and they haven't touched any of it. They've been very, very lazy out there. And I think it's weird that this got taken down, and yeah. that almost is a clue that it probably is. And my takeaway from this picture is that Homegirl got herself in pretty good shape for this role. <laughs> yeah, 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 She's ready to do battle. And yeah. by the way, the fact that we had Queen Amidala in the prequels would have the regal dress up too. Right. But she could also dress down when she had to get down and dirty in Attack of the Clones. So well, there's, there's some precedent. There are elements, even what they've been exploring in the canon, with how Leia was starting to learn more about her mother when she got like a vision on uh, Naboo or whatever it was. That they 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 have similarities, but. She's just something about her. I feel the character would feel something co way more comfortable in something like that than in the more regal stuff, which we probably will see. As yeah, well. I mean, if you look at like Han Solo's outfit at the end of the teaser, you know, it sort of looks it looks Star Warsy, but a little older, right. a little more worn, and that's sort of this might be the Leia take yeah. on. We all, all right. know old people aren't exactly the bastions of fashion that they once were. All right, what's uh, next? Greg Grunberg, Christian, uh, he is one of J.J. Abrams' best friends, and he's a known actor, probably best for his role on Heroes. He's going to be in Star Wars The Force Awakens, and we know a couple facts about his character, that he signed on for three movies, he shot for seven weeks in London, he's not going to be a CG character, and he has facial hair. And he also revealed another little tidbit, is that the majority of his action is going to be in the cockpit of some spaceship called the Millennium Falcon, mm. what do you make of this news? There's two things. There's one is that he's either part of the group that has taken over the Millennium Falcon and, and Han and Chewie when they when they get it back, maybe they take him out and his and his group. But then he says he's going to be in it for a couple of, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, maybe. So unless he's like uh, Flea from Back to the Future and just starts <laughs> popping up here and there. But I but I think that what's more likely is that. He is working with Han. Maybe, maybe he's one of not his new Chewie, but he's he's a guy that works with him, and he's a guy that knows the Falcon. He's he's kind of a, a young, new blood that he would be helping Han out. So it's possible. But Jermaine, what do you think? Uh, well, you, you mentioned before with the uh, Forrest Whitaker news that you know you had to take it with a grain of salt. I take all this Grunberg stuff with a grain of salt. Really? We know he's in it. Yeah. Obviously, we know he's in it, and I've heard that he was on set for that long. Uh, and I, I believe I believe half of that. What everything what we yeah. said. And maybe it's all true. Um, but I, I just don't see JJ putting him. In such a if, uh, in a prominent three episode sort of arc, he's his friend, but he's always sort of like the good luck charm. He's like in there for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but if it is true, we'll, and we'll say it is true, um, 
I, I think maybe he's like Poe Dameron's friend, something. He's like, you know, he's like sort of Poe's right hand man mm. or something like that, sort of um, because we've heard rumors that maybe Poe has something to do with the Millennium Falcon. I don't know for sure. Um, and I like Greg Grunberg, and I'm excited to see him in it, but um, yeah, I don't know how much I believe all this. So he's kind of like the Ron Howard's brother of J.J. Abrams, right. where he's just going to pop up somewhere in every J.J. movie, because he was in Mission Impossible 3 for a little bit. Right. He was in Star Trek. Here, it does sound like he's going to be a gearhead. Maybe he's working on the one named Falcon. Maybe like he's the Wedge Antilles of this cool. new yeah. trilogy, because I, Wedge didn't have a huge role in any of the movies, but he survived all three, one of the very few to do that. I think what was interesting, too, is on, uh, I guess it was Star Wars 7 News or something, yeah. they put up the... Uh, the Im- image of him signing like a, a, a what's it called the model of the Millennium Falcon, mm. and he signed it and he put SW in it, and then he said that doesn't mean Star Wars. It's a tease for Episode Seven. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, th- I was like, what is? I mean, that would be really weird. So maybe his character is Mitchell's SW. Yeah. I don't know, um, but that seemed like a cool cryptic tease. Yeah, um, I, I I'm very curious to see what happens. I happen to agree with you. I think it's going to be a smaller role, but not like a big arc. But it's just someone. That pops up, and it'd be very interesting if it was Poe Dameron's buddy, because of what, maybe they're they're flying X wings together. You yeah, know, I and think Wedge is probably a good example. Maybe yeah. or maybe not, maybe maybe a Jed Porkins or something. You uh, know, like maybe not yeah. as big, but like <laughs> yeah. a little. He's, yeah. he's Porkins' grandson. Yeah, exactly. yeah. there you go. Um, all right, what's next? Well, we always talk on the show about how toys can be a great source of breaking news for the upcoming Star Wars films. How about this one? What is this got? too much of a yogurt merchandising stretch to say <laughs> that CoverGirl is actually a source of breaking news? According to rebelscum.com, several photos showing off a new line of makeup from CoverGirl appear to be using the Force Awakens logo, and some of the products might even have some lines that could be from the upcoming movie. Now, yes, there's some classic lines in there, too, like a do or do not, there is no try, you're my only hope. I don't think they put I have a bad feeling about this on a makeup <laughs> case. But there's also some ones that we haven't seen Star Wars movies yet, like, there has been an awakening. Which we know that from the first teaser. I will finish what you started and immune to the light. Who boy. It's speculation time. I know. Uh, Honestly, and when I talk about, I don't know if I believe the Grunberg stuff. I totally believe that. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. this is where the information comes from these The days. toys. And the toys yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it makes so much sense that it would be like, oh, well, CoverGirl forgot to do, think about this. And yeah. somebody snapped a pick. And then the one, the fact that the uh, the line from the first trailer is on there is yeah. what really what sold me. What, what do you, so let's do some speculating oh, here. Oh, man. I, so if, you're, if, from, if I was to guess, I will finish what you started. Whether that's Kylo Ren or whether that's uh, Snoke holding that Darth Vader mask in the in the, the concept art that was leaked, that's being said to that helmet. Yeah, I think that you, that would make a lot of sense if it's, it's looking to him or, or, or Palpatine, whatever they started. Could be Ray or uh, Finn talking to Luke Skywalker. True, you know, yeah. you know, because he tried to bring down the Sith and. You know, succeeded to a point we thought, and we now thought. obviously didn't. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you say immune to the light, that sounds like something that Luke Skywalker could be saying about Snoke or somebody else, describing just how evil whoever he's talking about is. Unless, or uh, he's badass enough to say that about himself. Yeah. <laughs> that Luke Skywalker is immune to no, the light. No, Snoke is saying that. Oh, if yeah. Snoke that's... is saying he's immune. If, what if two of those quotes were from Snoke, <laughs> which we know the first one is? Yeah. 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 There's been an awakening. So I love all three of these quotes, and I can't wait to see how they're used. I hope they're just not used like by accident to like Chewie's. Like, there's too much sunlight coming through the Falcon. It's like, ah, he's immune to the light. <laughs> it, it's Greg Grunberg saying to Han Solo, I'll finish what you started. He's talking about, yeah, like repairing Repairing the something. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, the, right. The so, uh, that's, I mean, there's always, it, that's always a lot of fun. But going back to what Jermaine said, you're so right with, even when these toys get leaked and pictures, that's how we get a lot of this stuff. So once, that's why I'm going to be curious or maybe even stay away from when the toy lines really start coming out. That's why I think we might get some information at Comic-Con oh, definitely. With, I, with toys. Yeah, I think the fact that the panel is Friday, right, right, it makes right. it. It's like so we did it early, so we have two days that we can put the toys on the floor Saturday, Sunday. Because I heard they're going to release the toys. We don't know if they're going to use all the toys, right. but I think at least the first wave that we get in September, we're going to see on Comic Con. I would imagine that in the new teaser, we sort of see some new characters, and we've already seen like four or five characters. Then we get to see the toys on Saturday. And I think in, in that the trailer, I agree with you. I think that you're going to get Snoke now because they made it, yep. uh, made it a purpose. Maz Katana. Yeah, and and Donald Gleason finally. Don't Finally, or Von Sydow, too. Interested to see what... Yes, but I think because because the reason those two characters will be in the trailer is for what Jermaine just said. If they're yeah. going to release those toys the next day, right. there you go. Yeah. Right, so if you're in line for Hall H to go see the Force Awakens panel, as soon as that thing's done, get out and get your butt to whatever booth it is, because that line is going to be wrapped around the block. Uh, yeah. Christian, our last piece of news today actually comes from our buddy Jeff Snyder on Meet the Movie Press. He revealed that Michelle McLaren 
has met with Lucasfilm about the upcoming project, the second Star Wars anthology film that was recently left vacant by Mr. Josh Trank. Now, what we believe this to mm -hmm. be about is a Boba Fett, Han Solo, criminal underworld project, and McLaren has some history working with that because she's done shows like Breaking Bad, The X-Files, Walking Dead, and even Game of Thrones. She was attached to direct 2017 standalone Wonder Woman movie until she decided that a talking panther would be cool, and then they got her off that project. <laughs> so now she might be one of the people that is at least in talk for the second anthology film, how do we feel about this news, gentlemen? Uh, love it. I mean, I think I think she'd be great. I mean, I love her episodes of you know Game of Thrones and or no, she didn't do Game of Thrones. Uh, she did do yeah, a couple Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Sorry, Breaking yeah, yeah, Bad, yeah. Breaking yeah. Bad especially. And uh, yeah, I, I'd be all for it. I mean, at the same time, I mean, the reason Jeff didn't write this up on the wrap and he put it in in uh, you know on the uh, the podcast was because it just wasn't meeting. You know, right. I, I know of other filmmakers I can't say who have taken meetings at Lucasfilm. You know. Right. And maybe that is to direct an anthology film, or maybe it was to pitch something, or just to like you know be like, hey, I'm interested if anything comes up, you know. So I, I think I think she's probably on their list. We know the Kathleen Kennedy, Kiri Hart, they love, and and every star of the movie so far are strong females. Right. Michelle McLaren's that, and definitely knows that. And I think I think it probably puts her maybe in the lead that we even know that she's in it, but. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. I, I wouldn't get too excited for you just yet. I agree with you that I think that because of meeting, what Kiri Hart even said at Celebration was they want to meet with the best filmmakers. They yeah. want to meet with people. They want to have a roster. And what they've done so far with casting in general has mm -hmm. been amazing. And they're doing the same thing with directors. And I think that I love her credits and I love all the shows that she's done as well, too. It. And I don't know what really happened with that Wonder Woman thing. Right, I was just making a no, joke. I we know. don't actually know if if it was just creative differences. But you're not or the if, one that. But you're not the right. only person that. Uh, many people have said that. That's actually where I was going with. I don't know what is true, but it scares me when someone who's brought onto this genre type feel that does that maybe didn't understand the genre as well as maybe they thought. I don't know if she's a big Star Wars fan. Everyone that they've gotten so far involved true, has been a big Star Wars fan. It has like. And she might be a, a Star Wars nut. Yes. I, I have no idea. But I'm saying, I think that, I know that shouldn't be a requirement for every director. And I can already hear a million voices crying <laughs> out at once. Uh, <laughs> but but what I'm saying is that uh, it, it helps. And she might go in there, not being a fan, and crush it. But for me, I'm still going by the fact that I think Favreau's going to be the guy. And also, and this could be because he's working on Jungle Book. I know. He tweeted out a picture of himself out yesterday yeah. at, at Skywalker Ranch. I know he's working on Jungle Skywalker Book. Skywalker Ranch is, is not where we were. Oh, they say, they, they would go to meet at Lucasfilm, Skywalker right. Ranch. They would do sound and right, stuff. Right, yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, He's up there. He's in the area. The, the, thi the thing is, is that he's, he's in the family. He oh, yeah. is absolutely in the family, and I would not be surprised. He is a big Star Wars fan. I want to see him get his hands on, let's say this is a Boba Fett and Han Solo type of movie. I want to see uh, Favreau doing that because he's he's done good he's done good with a guy in a mess flying around before. But he hasn't done too good with uh, characters played by Harrison Ford, Cowboys and Aliens, yeah, exactly. which <laughs> is very true. Yeah. Very true. So, uh, Mark, what do you, what would you think? Um, look, I, I think I think this would be the right choice. I, I'd be very excited about her because I think she's going to know the source material at least a little bit. And I don't necessarily need all that much familiarity with Boba Fett and Han Solo. They're already ingrained in the culture so much. And by the way, Boba Fett is one of the least familiar characters. Even though he's so beloved, he's got such a cloak of mystery surrounding him that I wouldn't hate somebody who isn't a diehard Star Wars fan coming in and directing that movie, especially if it's the like... Talking it's, Panther. It's a, it, it, we need Talking Panthers <laughs> in there, okay? And maybe this cover girl makeup says she will start what Josh Tra she'll finish what Josh Trank started. Yeah, the next line is raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you should uh, see the crawl text. Like, by the way, there's talking <laughs> panthers. Have fun in this galaxy. That's it. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Now, we finished with all the Star Wars movie news. The next segment on this show is simply known as What's the Deal with Canon? These are all the things happening in the world of Star Wars. Like I mentioned on the top of the show, comic books, video games, uh, novels, everything that links back into the overall history line that is now canon in the Star Wars universe. We're going to talk about it. Mark, what is up first? Well, there's this little conference in Southern California taking place this week called E3. You might notice my Battlefront shirt, and they had a new gameplay trailer for Battlefront. I watched it. I'm not a huge gamer anymore. You think? This might be the one that gets me to steal my brother's PlayStation 4 because this looks phenomenal. The, the reveal at the end, seeing Luke Skywalker go up against Darth Vader, is awesome. And it also, I think, shows why you can't have canon 
in video games because yeah. there's video just too games expansive. or this type of game. I don't know about video games. I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think I, this type of game. I want. I, I want. To, I want the free. I think that video games would just be too limited, especially something like Battlefront, where that, that this is clearly the battle on Hoth, where it takes place at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, and then Luke Skywalker shows well, up. No, no, see, actually, this is, like, Battlefront is a is a giant. A sandbox, right? Where you can grab any toy you want, so they could you could do the same battle on Dagobah or Cloud City or all these different places. So, this doesn't necessarily take place, uh, you know, in Empire Strikes Back, right? So, like, uh, so that's why you this get to game, choose to fight where you want to choose fight. to fight where you want with what you want, right. with what weapon you want, with what ship you want, and, and whichever team go. you want, which I yes, like too. You can cool. be a good guy, you can be a bad yeah. guy. Yeah, so as far as the gameplay went, I, th- I know people were worried about it at first. I'm not worried at all. I think it looks incredible. I felt like just watching it, I felt Very like I, the music, the way that it, it just, it, for this five minutes, I was locked in and it was it was like there's the great video games are the ones that you can watch other people play and you don't even care if you're playing. In five minutes, I was like, oh, what's next? Um, now, <laughs> I think that Jermaine's point is absolutely the point that you should look at here is that this doesn't, as far as timeline goes, when you want to fight on Jakku, when you want to fight on Hoth, wherever you want to fight, this is the battle you can fight anywhere. It felt like the Empire Strikes Back battle, <laughs> it did. but it, but and it maybe was made to look like that to get Your the version. fans in, yeah, but it's absolutely. not actually yes. taking right. place. And then. the flip side of that is, if you fought on Endor or something, it would probably feel like Jedi. Right. So right. Um, it's it's just the way it's set up. The, the bottom line is, it feels like Star Wars every way yeah. you go. Though what's interesting is that they do have the uh, Battle of Jakku uh, downloadable content that's going to come out a week after this. And that seems like it is canon because they're talking about like, oh, this is the battle that we right. see the result of at the beginning of the second teaser. So I don't know if that's going to be just a storyline or if it's going to be you just can just go on this planet. They're still very being hush hush about it. Yeah, the video games in general so far, and as far as canon goes, have been the most complex yeah. because, especially with the first one out of the gate being Battlefront. Well, I guess um, what's Uprising is going to be the first game. The, that the comes mobile out. game, yeah. Yeah, and that one does seem like it's an easier way to tell canon storyline. That's why I think that there are certain games right. that will work very well for canon, like Uprising's one of those. I mean, you could do an Uncharted game, you know, which has a lot of free motion, but the story's always driving you. Right. So you can, like, they can tell, you can be Luke Skywalker walking around and like, oh, whatever, you know, right. or whatever, Finn, or whoever. It's the multiple ending RPGs that are the ones yeah. that you have to be careful with, because when you, do, like, for Night Seal Republic, you had two endings. You could either end as a Sith, or you could end on the light. You're not going to be able to do that if you go ahead and announce. What they need to do more of, though, is announce very clearly what is and isn't. Do you think they um, should do a label like what they do with the novels, like this is yes. Star Wars Legends or something like that? Uh, but they're not doing. They're not going to call it Legends. They're just going to say it is or it isn't. Um, because in the next trailer we're going to talk about it after we're done here, I have a very interesting question that I want to pose to you and you to see so maybe there's some information because I don't know. But sorry, if you guys want to finish anything else on no, Battlefront, I mean I think this looks really really cool and it's going to be fun. But again, I think for me, uh, I'm not a huge gamer. I'm a, I'm a big story guy, like so. This feels like something you pick up and just play and just put down, yeah. and it's like, it seems like fun. But I, I need a story, and I don't think Battlefront has much of a story. Right. So I mean, it doesn't have a lot of first, uh, you know, one player stuff. It's mostly multiplayer, which is great, and that's what gaming is now. But I'm of the Super Nintendo generation, right, and right. Super could, Star Wars, baby. Hell yeah, that's so good. Or <laughs> even you know, Shadow of the Empire or something right, like that. Right. But um, yeah, so I think it looks amazing. I don't have a PS4 yet. This might get me to get it, but it's not going to be, you know, I don't know if it's going to really scratch that Star Wars itch after, you know, hearing I all think it's an appetizer. I think it's a really yeah. tasty appetizer to where, as a Star Wars fan, you're going to have so much fun playing it with your buddies and whoever you, like, you online, you'll have, a, a, it'll definitely get you in the spirit of Star Wars, no doubt. Me, I'm with. I'm not the biggest gamer, but when it comes to Star Wars games that further the story, I can't get enough of it, and that's why that, that to me that Uprising game looks yeah. incredible. I want to know more. And, al- and also, real quick, was the, the this game we've only seen sort of you play as uh, in the few trailers we've seen as like a nobody, right? You know, but then we've also seen Boba Fett, and we've seen Luke Skywalker, and we've seen Darth Vader, and we've seen the Millennium Falcon. That that interests me, right? You know that right, that right. if I can play as Boba Fett flying the Millennium Falcon or something, I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of excited. And I think that's I mean? that's exactly the reason why you can't make a game like this canon because Boba Fett's not flying around on the on the Millennium Falcon, but it was sure as hell would be fun to yeah, watch exactly, him do exactly. it. But um, let me ask you guys this question then, because this bleeds into the next conversation: yeah. is do you because you guys aren't huge gamers day to day with the fact that a game comes out that is listed as not can- it's a story game, but it's not canon versus one that is canon? Isn't that going to make you want to play the canon one more? More than the non-canon. Well, I don't think they're going to do anything that's story that's not canon. Yeah. I mean, at this at this point, I think th- this is this is canon in that the the story group gave it an okay. Like this all makes sense, Star Wars. And wise. the planets are all canon. the planets are yeah. all the characters are all you know the, the scenarios are all right. like you know to get that stamp of approval for Star Wars. It just didn't happen. 
It's all, right. all Boba Fett's fault. So let's again. let's jump to the next story yeah. because this this conversation will continue right into this next one. Well, it's another trailer for another video game, but we're going way, way, way back in a galaxy far, far away, a long, long time ago. The Old Republic game, where it appears you have two twins and they grow up and they're both great warriors, and then one of them gets the upper hand, and maybe that has some sinister implications down the line for some other baddies in the Star Wars universe. Christian, you you love talking about the Old Republic. Love it. What do you got? I love this trailer. First of all, as a trailer. It's amazing. It has everything that I wanted from an Old Republic trailer. It felt like when they're training in the beginning, it felt like, a, like oh, ancient Rome type stuff. And then you have the, the emperor who's, who's got the two kids who seems like he's definitely a Sith Lord and is teaching his kids, basically. One needs to crave the power. Um, and you have all that. My question goes back to what we were just talking about here. Is, and I've been talking about I thought we were going to get an Old Republic. I thought Knights Old Republic, but it turns out there was, it was an Old Republic thing that came out. My question is because this seems to be an add-on to the MMO game that came out of Old Republic before the whole merger even came out. It seems like to be an add-on here. With but BioWare is back on board now with such an elaborate trailer and release. Now, how is the and nobody at Lucasfilm has said a word. I wonder if you know this. Is there do we know is Old Republic canon now? Is it I not? I don't think I don't think so. I think it's sort of it is until we it's sort of that thing they said about Boba Fett. He's alive and dead in this pit until a story brings him out. And I think this is a story that started before the canon and is very, very successful and has its fans. But I do not think any of this is canon. I mean, this looks awesome. I'd be very, very right. cool. I mean, I don't wasn't very familiar with the game, but I watched the trailer and I'm like, wow, I want to see this movie. Doesn't get, you know? But isn't it confusing, though, now? Because like by releasing, because even what you said before with uh, anything that they release in story now has to be canon. If this isn't, it doesn't tie new, into yeah, the, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't tie into the overall stuff of Force Awakens because it's thousands of years yes. beforehand. But we, first of all, to be clear, the Old Republic, in and by its, itself, is canon because in one of the episodes of the Clone Wars, they even mention the Old Republic. But the video game story, the Knights of the Republic, the Old Republic, that stuff has not been confirmed yet. So that's why when I got this trailer. I'm like, how much of it is actual canon? I don't know. It's, it's a question. Somebody did ask, though, on the canon panel, and they were very cagey about it, I yeah. think. And it's because they, they, I don't know if they know. or like. But that's know. what I'm saying with this, this stuff. story. It right. seems, like, seems like those are characters that are very well set. Right. They have a story, you know, the light and the dark brothers training. That seems like something that could be canon or could be characters. And like you said, so far in the past has no bearing on anything right. except for maybe, you know, like, setting some rules about being a Sith and being a Jedi. It seems like it's pretty fertile ground, too, to where the story group can just pick and choose what they want to be canon, which is maybe what they're doing with somebody like Darth Plagueis, where mm -hmm. we, we're not going to take everything that everybody ever wrote about this guy and make it fact, but we like this element, we like this element, so we're going to take that. But that's different, though. That's different when you say because 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 even at, because all those books like the the James Lucino book that you're talking right. about right to let's say they 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 have some elements of Plagueis that they mention in the Tarkin novel right that's still taking stuff that was already pre existing now by now by going past that that timeline of saying okay everything now coming out is canon and does it, but, but and does now that releasing statement this. include that that statement definitely includes video games yes, yes. Then, that, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's then, where then why is this even confusing? Then, then aren't we just to assume that this is all canon? Because that's, this game started before that, and that's the right. thing. You know, is that this is like an add-on to the game? It. Did with the add-on right on that narrow it's, it's, timeline. It's, 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 I think this is the only really, really super, super hard gray area yes. of this whole thing. Yes. Uh, is this old republic question? Um, and and I don't know. And honestly, I. I mean, it's an interesting conversation. Yeah. But I don't really care. See, I, you know, I, I do. I know, I'm you old do, republic you, you, fanatic. I know you are. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, but this game looks... It looks like the, the, the trailer. Let's talk about the trailer in general. I mean, what I loved about the trailer is that it didn't... And look, I, I can listen to all the classic Star Wars bells and whistles and the John Williams score all day long. This did not rely as much on the Star Wars nostalgia that we love. This furthered the story. It had different music than I'd ever heard before. The lightsabers looked different. The battle scenes and the costumes looked different. Yeah. It, 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 it felt like I was still in a Star Wars universe, but in a place I'd li literally never seen before. And that, as, as somebody who is a fan of video games is a very intriguing prospect. I love Hoth. I love Endor Dagobah. I've been to those places. I have no idea what's happening right. on this battlefield. I want to know more. Awesome. Okay, what's next? Uh, let's see. Now we are going to comic books, and we have some new covers for some upcoming comic book issues, Christian. Yep. Wednesday is new comic day. Um, so we get to see Lando Calrissian and what looks like, uh, at least one of these covers, looks like the end of Return of the Jedi. We also have Star Wars uh, Shattered Empire, where you have the... Uh, Millennium Falcon flying out, and you have a really cool uh, Stormtrooper helmet. And uh, there's uh, Luke Skywalker in the Rancor is another highlight. And like we said, Lando Calrissian in what appears to be a game. Is that Sabak? Is he losing yeah. the Millennium Falcon as we speak? Mm -hmm. What's your thing?
Thanks. Well, Jermaine, out of all these that are up there, what intrigues you the most out of all these covers? Um, he, it's Lando. Who's he playing with? Right. You know, and what's and what's he doing? But you know, we know he's a gambler. We know he loves that, and I always love that. We, I always love that about Lando. I'm a big scoundrel guy. You know, Han Solo is my favorite, but I always want to know about him and Lando. So. That's a book I'm only reading currently right now, like the main Star Wars book. Okay. Um, but I think, and I know you recommended that a couple of these other ones are really, really good, Vader especially. Yeah. But the Lando one I'm really interested in because that's a character that we that the other movies haven't added. You know, even Boba Fett, like they've added more to it. And the Rebels gives a little bit. Right. But um, so that, that one, but everything else, I mean, like the, the other images are just like iconic Star Wars images that you've always thought about but never could see. You know, like, the, but though it didn't quite make sense with Luke with the Rancor, he looked very surprised when he saw the Rancor in Jedi. Right. Um, but I don't know. And then the Rebels one is just an awesome version of those characters who I'm beginning to love. And anything with the Millennium Falcon, I'm in. So. Yeah, for me, it's definitely it's, it's Shattered Empire just because I am starting to Jones for September, man. I cannot <laughs> wait until – because this is when the, the, the journey to the Force Awakens, like everything starts coming out, whether it be that – Aftermath that, and stuff. Aftermath, the, uh, the, the video game we were talking about, the, um, the mobile game – all this stuff, and now this filling in those gaps. There's, it's such a rich period now. Thirty years to find out right before. Like I feel like I'm going to have a little bit of added information when I see The Force Awakens in December. I'm going to be sitting down going, "Oh, okay. Well, that ties it now. I understand how that person has that because of this whole journey. I know where Han Solo has been this whole time. Like all that stuff because you'll be filled in through these gaps that they're doing here. So Shattered Empire, as far as story wise, but I think as far as image goes yeah, yeah. you're right I, for me i like the the lando it's like who's he looking at who's, who's he playing is this the beginning yeah. of his dealings with the empire it, you know I, I, it's certainly it like jawas almost but except for the hands it's something similar. really elderly jawas yeah. <laughs> yes but it, skeleton it's, jawas. it's right before he takes control <laughs> of bestman so you're gonna find out kind of how that went down that to me is fun but uh, uh, even though the canaan one it's it's been my favorite. Well, I go I go back and forth. Vader and Kanan are my two favorite. But that's counter. Kanan. But this is that's that's Rebels Kanan. This isn't pre Rebels Kanan. So I don't understand. I th- well, I don't because the they do here. because they do uh, the first image in issue one actually has them all together. Okay, he's kind of flashing back. So maybe they go on some adventure together and then they flash back gotcha. again. It's possible. Um, but yeah, and then the, the only reason I'm I'm sort of tainted now by this Luke image is it reminds me of Heir to the Jedi. The book, which I was not a fan of, and I kind of—I'm just like I want Luke to get out of that period already. I want to focus on him more after Jedi. I can't wait to see more of, especially what the hell Luke has been doing. Right. Well, I, th- I think that's the one thing we're not going to get in any of this. Is I mean, for, for Force Awakens, is everything Luke Skywalker has just been so so handsome. Yeah, it's so mysterious. Yeah, you're right. And I think I think we're going to see he's going to be in the beginning of aftermath or something. And be like, oh, that was fun. Ewoks, peace, peace. and like disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then like Han Solo will be like, hey, what's this lightsaber? You don't think we're going to have much to do with him in aftermath? You don't think? Uh, I don't think no, so. I, I think I think from what I've read, I mean, I don't think there's going to be any real characters we know, and it's sort of like a, an imperial and a, and a rebel sort of like you know like soldier that are, that sort of have like. Is it more of a political spin then? It's like we're going to see no. what ha- what the fallout between the empire and the rebellion is. That's so. a different book, the one you're talking about. You're talking about like the Romeo and Juliet type relationship, right? There's Maybe one, there's a Romeo and Juliet type relationship that sounds actually pretty awesome of a rebel soldier and oh, okay. oh and, I love and, it. And the an Montagues imp- and the Capulets yes. in outer space, and, and that's in that that's in that time period of, of when those books are coming out. I forget which book oh, so that aftermath is. Aftermath isn't that one. No, I, I, aftermath is like the events of everything kind of going down uh, right. right after. I Jedi. thought it was told through that story though. I thought like sort of the, that story of what maybe happened it's the same was, one, but I, I thought it was know. I don't know. It's but either so, either so or many to keep track there's of so right much. Now. There's gonna be a lot coming out. We'll talk about them all on this show. Okay, well don't worry, guys, because yeah. now. Now that we have all these questions about canon, there's a new ultimate power in the universe. Star Wars 7. It's the ultimate guide to the new Star Wars canon. So if you have Disney hitting the restart button on the Star Wars Expanded Universe, it's just very nice to see that you have all the canon that is in one place and it's chronologically set up, starting with the prequel trilogy. Christian, did you check this out? I did, because Star, our buddies over at StarWars7News.com did this, and they broke it down great. And if you want to check it out, uh, we'll put a link in the description of this video so you can see it as far as going through all of it right now. It's just the one thing, with the there was a few different sites that had listed all the canon and for some reason they forgot a lot of the comics off of it this has everything everything so has the video game or like the the battlefront uh, this novel is, this has everything, everything. yeah, yeah this good. has absolutely everything if you if you're confused as far as timeline as far as what's in the canon this is a great article and star wars 7 news really knocked it out of the park with this 
list. So I will put that in there. It has all the novels that I've read, um, which I'm all caught up about, and we'll talk about that soon. Um, all the comics, all the video games, everything. So check that out. Again, link is in the description. And the artwork is awesome, too. It's not just, You're not just reading the stuff. You get yeah. little tidbits, pictures. The one I liked in particular was the one with Dooku looking at Darth Maul in a very menacing fashion, which yeah, is... Yeah, that's from the Son of Dathomir uh, comic book. Whew, yeah, that, that might almost get me to read something, which I'm not going to anytime soon, because luckily, my good buddy Christian Harloff reads everything that comes out with a Star Wars <laughs> label on it. And Christian, you recently got an advanced copy of Dark Disciple, which I'm on record as saying looks like an awesome Iron Maiden cover. Christian, <laughs> what is in this book? How did you like it? I will tell you this, going into this book, uh, these, out of all the ones when they announced it, I was like, okay, it, I, I like the Saj Ventress, and I like Quinlan Voss. I was a Clone Wars fan, so I'd be interested in reading it, but I'm not really excited about it because... It's four episodes of the Clone Wars that were, were supposed to happen, but then they canceled it, and, and they liked the arc, so they made it into a book. So I was like, I, sounds okay. It's my second favorite book. Uh, wow. Lords of the Sith is the top. This is my second. And it goes, and, I, and as my list goes right now, it's, it's Lords of the Sith, Dark Disciple, Tarkin. Uh, You're then, such an evil dude. Because yeah, you're liking all these evil, you know, Dark Disciple, Tarkin, you root but for the bad guy. But this isn't just an evil evil story, though, to, actually, because if you're... What I will say about this book is this, is that because I asked Jermaine before we went on the air here is if he was a big Clone Wars fan, he said he watched the first season, but not all the yeah. way through. And I know everybody says it gets better and better and better, and it's on Netflix, I just haven't had the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, it absolutely gets better, and, and as it progresses... These characters are developed. Certainly, Asajj Ventress is developed more and more. She started out as a as a, a Sith apprentice to Count Dooku, um, got screwed over, and throughout it, then became a bounty hunter. And the last we saw her in the sixth season of the Clone Wars, she was a bounty hunter, kind of on the run doing these jobs, and that was it. Quinlan Voss, on the other hand, was always a Jedi, kind of on like toeing the line, but always just it was really fun and, and debuted actually as an extra in the Phantom Menace, which is a fun fact. Ah. Um, but he, he and Obi Wan had a great arc together in the Clone Wars. So this story, this story in general, it just sounds pretty cool. As to where the space battle happens off the, the top, and Dooku causes like kind of a mass murder, and the Jedi Council gets together. We've got to do something about this dude. Finally, um, so. Unlike the order, they they have an assassination attempt that they're going to do on Dooku, and which the whole council and it's Mace Windu going Pulp Fiction style and saying let's let's take him out. And um, is it unsolicited by the Jedi Council, or are no, they, they like they, no, they, we they, have to do at this the, at this point because we're getting closer to Revenge of the Sith timeline at this right. point. So like it's it's got to happen. It's we, and Obi Wan suggests Quinlan Voss, and Quinlan Voss, who's basically an undercover cop. Jedi, he's gone, cool. and he's been so he's really good at what he does. And they bring him back, and they tell him that he's got to go out and do it. And he's he's reluctant because to kill is not in the Jedi way. But obviously, coming from Yoda and from Mace, he he takes the assignment. But they also tell him that the one person he's got to find to kind of infiltrate is Asajj Ventress, and they have to work together. They have to find he's got to, he can't tell her he's a Jedi and has to kind of go as undercover, pretend that he's a bounty hunter, go in there, and they strike up this relationship and a romantic relationship with that. Um, so what happens a Jedi not supposed to love, you know, as far as it's, it's the forbidden line. Again, toe in the line. <laughs> and, the, and Dooku's in it. Anakin's in it. Obi-Wan's in it. Um, it's... It, Asajj Ventress is has was one of my favorite characters, and she's great in this as well. She's got the long locks; she's not bald anymore. If you're a Clone Wars fan, you'll love it absolutely. If you're not, I think you'll appreciate the story, even though you might be like, "Who the hell are these people?" Um, but that's what Wikipedia is for. So Quinlan, I mean, now obviously he's breaking one rule because you're not supposed to just go and murder somebody. So he figures that while I'm doing that anyway, I might as well have a romantic interest because I'm already breaking the Jedi Council rule. Yeah. Now the Jedi Council, are they total background in this after they give the order? Or do you get to say, get some sort of insight into Yoda's perspective? Oh, yeah. You because get, Yoda must be really conflicted about this, and you never really see Yoda. I mean, you do a little bit in the prequels where he's just kind of fretting and he's not sure what to do, but Yoda usually knows what he's doing. Uh, there's a lot of Yoda scenes. There's a lot of uh, Mace Windu stuff. There's, th You could tell that this was a four-episode arc, and I believe it was written by, some of it was actually written by George Lucas's daughter. Um, the, 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 not the actual novel, it was by Christy Golden, but the, the novel, it's, the episodes themselves, I think one of the storylines was from Lucas's daughter, and it felt, you definitely felt like, oh, I could see this. I pictured, I closed my eyes and I saw the actual episode happening. I could, I could see it. But, um, so would you say, um, were you satisfied too, without spoiling anything, at yeah. the end, are you saying, okay, this, this fits into a Star Wars canon, I'm happy with this as a Star Wars story? Yes, because as I'm reading it, I'm going, if they do this, this, or this, then they can do anything in these books. 
if they do one of those things. Because if they don't, it's just like, ah, the books are just kind of there. But if they do one of these things, then it's like, okay, wait. So they're really paying attention to what these books can do to further the story, and they do one of those things in okay. this book. And where we, I'm like, okay, if we can do that, then that means we can do more going forward. So it, it, it's, it's very interesting. I, I, really, I thought that Christy Golden had a great lock on these characters. You could tell she had very similar to what Paul Kemp did in Lords of the Sith, knew the characters. It didn't feel like someone writing Star Wars. It felt, it felt like characters just coming to life on gotcha. a page. And when can the rest of us scoundrels pick up this book? July 7th, 2015. Oh, it's my it, birthday. Oh, look at you. Go so ahead maybe and I'll get you, <laughs> send it my way, I'll get kids. you a copy that you'll never read. Okay, so let's, um, <laughs> let, let's get to... We're not going to do Address the Council today. But what we're going to do, we are going to basically address you guys as the council. It's Twitter time. So you guys have sent out tweets throughout the week or so, and we're going to read them up. It is time for you guys to address the council. Mark, what's first? Jeffrey Haynes has a cool question. At AMC Movie News, hashtag AMC Jedi Council. Should Tamura Morrison play Boba Fett if he appears in the sequel trilogy? No. Wow. <laughs> I don't want him to appear in, at all. I want, I want it to be a Dread Pirate Robert situation. Um, you don't want to see him with the, the mask off, or do you want to see the mask off with somebody else? I, I want to hear someone else's voice. I want to know that the lore, what happened basically, is that he's not, he was not a clone. The one that we knew in, in Empire Strikes Back, that was not Daniel Tamora. Morgan. No, it was <laughs> not at all. They're going to retcon that, the, the special edition voice, and it was, it was a different Mandalorian that took over. But that's, but that's me. You actually want to see him back? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I, I, thought, I thought he was great. I think he's a great actor in general. And... Uh, and keep the canon, keep keep the story. I mean, you can definitely do that. I'm sure there is a way to like to flip it or say that that clone had some different DNA. But if we're going super literal, he was a clone, and he's going to grow up to look like his father exactly. And his father was Tamora Morrison. Right. Um. So so yeah. And plus, he'll have aged like Tamora Morrison. Um. And I'm going to keep butchering your name. I'm sorry, sir. But um. <laughs> yeah. So so I, I think that's I think that'd be awesome. I honestly don't know if if that'll happen. If we go younger, like if we see him. Not in the sequel trilogy, if we see him in an anthology movie, then um, I right. would like to see somebody else. But we'll see. Right. Yeah, I, I think I'm of that same logic, too. I don't really need to see Boba Fett without his helmet on, uh, without his helmet off ever. I like the mystery, the lore surrounding Boba Fett. But his I helmet's think. It's so cool, too. Like, that's, it's cool in any of our faces. Yeah. You know, so. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, you're always kind of like, it just intrigues, like, what happened with this guy? Particularly, the Sarlacc pit thing is very interesting. It takes a thousand years to digest. Was he the corn niblet that somehow got out of there and now he's flying around the universe again and causing havoc for things after Return of the Jedi? If, if so, if that's the case, if that's the time we're going on, then yeah, I think Morrison should play him. All right, what's next? Uh, Josh Barnes writes, do you think Daniel Craig's trooper will play a big part in the upcoming movies? Will we even see his face? No, I don't think we'll see his face. I think it was just a fun thing that he did. He was on. If he's even in there. Because, I mean, Simon Pegg said that, but was he, was he being honest? Was he not? I, I mean, I, I, I don't see any reason why he couldn't be. There were rumors that he was on set for a while. Right, and um, then Pegg said that, and then, yeah. he, and then Pegg made it sound like he was definitely in it. Then he goes, oh, no, I was just referring to the rumors. And Pegg, as, as great as much as I love him, he does like to you know, put his foot in his mouth once in a while. <laughs> right. So I, I think he probably is in it, but uh, I don't think we'll ever know. We'll never know. It's going to be the same thing like if they decide to do that Jar Jar Binks bones thing on, it, it, somewhere to where you, you pass by and you, you have to really pause it to find it. Or maybe it comes out down the lines like, you can actually find me if you go through there and you push pause. Or Oscar Isaac's uncle, who, got a, who uh, he talked about, got a, a cameo in the movie. Right, you right. Know? Like, we, we're never going to know who he is. He's just there. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah, I Technically, I mean, what, I, I think technically, well, yes, you will see his face, but like you guys said, I think that you're going to have to slow mo it. You're going to be, oh, look, that's him right there, chilling. I don't know that he's going to play that big of a part. I think that as much as cool as it would be to see him in a Star Wars movie have a prominent role, we just would have heard something, right? Well, I mean, there have been rumors. What if he pops up like like Matt Damon in in, no, in that space he's, movie? He's a stormtrooper, so I mean, he'll just be one somebody walking. He'll I think he's, a yeah. May, a million and, and maybe he'll, he could be in the trailer. He not. could, and may, but maybe there's something along the lines like a nice little thing where he goes, move along. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, maybe. And that's a lo and that's all you get. And you go, wait, wait, wait. What was it? And then he just has a drink and leaves. <laughs> he just says, "Along, yeah, move along." All right, yes. Mo well, we're gonna move along. What's what's next? Ryan Clark writes: After learning more about Star Wars Battlefront at E3, what game mode are you most excited for? Uh, there's this, I guess. I, there's the survival mode, and then like the multiplayer mode. And mm -hmm. like I said before, when we were talking about this, is I'm more interested in story stuff. So survival mode to me seems like you just sit there and try to keep old, stay alive. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm really interested in the first player stuff because I don't want to connect to the internet. I want to sit by myself and play the video game. Yeah. So I want to know what are, what are these missions that you can play by yourself 
and uh, and will it tell a story? And so for me, th- that's the part I'm most looking forward to. I'm sure that's a sm- huge minority. Well, I'm, I'm in yeah. the minority with you because the reason. Really? Yeah, I mean, I'm there as well because I want to see. I think that that's where you're going to go for that Jakku battle, mm. if it is indeed like the one part of the canons where you're going to see actually what happened. So I'm curious to play that. I do want to just sit there, play the game, figure out all these things by myself, and but then I'll probably plug into the internet and play also. But, th- that, but I think that, most of the game is on the internet. So like, it, yeah. like I think if you buy it, just play by yourself. You finish the game in like a day and you'd be yeah. like okay what do I do now you gotta go online right multiplayer I just want to yeah. kick the crap out of my brother at this game <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right last one uh Dave Hill writes consensus is that Han dies in episode seven panels thoughts on whether Chewie or the Millennium Falcon could go with him Peter Mayhew is in poor health well let, let's say this that First of all, we have no idea if Han's going to go out or not. I certainly think he's going to. Yes, but, you do. But we don't know if that's a fact or not. And then as far as Peter Mayhew, it, it, him that's the one thing about the, the fact that you, this is a guy in a costume. So there are already, there's no way Peter Mayhew is playing Chewbacca throughout this whole movie. No. He can barely walk the poor guy. You know, so Maybe they got Daniel Craig for the rest of this. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But as f- I, I actually don't think Chewie's going to go. I think Chewie's going to s- stick around. I think that Chewie's a staple of Star Wars, and I think that whether... I think he's going to wind up with Poe Dameron. That'd be cool. I, I think I- if Han does die again, we don't know. I, I kind of think he will as well. Yeah. If he does, I think Chewie will have fulfilled his debt. I'm, I, I've been... You know, Han saved my life, and I've been indebted to him, and now yeah. I'm going to go off and be... Chewbacca, and maybe they do a Chewbacca spinoff movie, and it's you know his family wandering around or something. Let me be the ca- the canon warden again. Is that life debt with Chewie canon now? Oh, fight! Well, we don't fight, know yet. Right. Fight! I know, but but he's with him, right? Yes. We don't. So we, don't know, we know he's with him, right. and, but so that that would be my thing. I but I think the Falcon is definitely going to be there. Yeah. I think. I mean, we've heard of, of the Finn and Ray fly the Falcon. That they're actually the people flying it in the trailer. So um, yeah, I think I think the Falcon stays. If, if Han dies, the Falcon stays, Chewie doesn't. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not thinking that Han's going to die. All I want to do is I'm rooting for him to survive. I think the Falcon's definitely going to make it. And the number one rule of big blockbuster movies in the summer, you never kill the dog. Chewie's staying around for a long time. All right, that's it. That's the council today. I'd like to thank the council on the panel. First, Jermaine, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, SlashFilm.com for one more day, and then I start a new job on uh, io9.com, and always on Twitter and Instagram at, at Jermaine Lucier. All right, and Mark, where can I find you? Well, not at Skywalker Ranch, but you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at 5150 Ellis, and you can check out Christian and I's movie show where we love talking, amongst other things, Star Wars. Schmoes no, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're trying to get to 200,000 subscribers by the end of June. Help us make that happen. And for me, Christian Harloff, at Christian Harloff, both Instagram and Twitter. Make sure that you get your questions in there. Hashtag AMC Jedi Council. We're going to be back next week. Great. May the Force be with you.